Hello, I am Stephanie with Baby Lock, and today I bring you the Reverse applique snowflake pillow project. There are three parts to this project, which is the reverse applique, the cording, and then we also get to stitch a hidden zipper in. Reverse applique is a little bit different than your typical applique, which is stitching on top of fabric. This time we're going to reveal the fabric underneath. So it's going to be a raw applique, but you get to bring it out from underneath. So it gives a little bit of a different texture. Make sure to check out the description for details and fabric requirements and more. So let's take a look at the supplies that you'll need. First, you'll need fabric for the front and back of your pillow, applique fabric, decorative thread for applique. The standard foot that comes with your machine works great for this project but you might consider using an open toe foot that's clear on the applique portion, or if you're using a fabric like cork or pleather, you might consider using the Teflon foot so that it glides over your fabric more easily. Applique scissors, piping cord, the adjustable zipper foot comes in handy, but you could also use the narrow zipper foot. Then you'll want standard thread as well as a bobbin wound with that thread, an invisible zipper, Baby Lock Tearaway Firm Stabilizer, and your template that comes free with this project. And don't forget your pillow form. So you're going to get your snowflake template, okay? And you wanna print two of those out. And what you can do is you can print them out on just printer paper and then tape them together. But what I did is I took my stabilizer firm and if you feel comfortable running it through your printer, you can do that as well. So I took that stabilizer firm I printed two separate templates, and then I'm going to tape these together. But if you don't feel comfortable running stabilizers through your printer, then you can use that standard printer paper, and as, after you tape these two pieces together, you can cut it out and then trace it onto your stabilizer, okay? But again, you might have to tape some stabilizer together depending on what size you have. All right, so here I have my layers, okay? So because this is reverse applique, we're putting our applique fabric underneath our pillow front fabric. The fabric that I used here, I can use pins with, but if you are using a fabric like cork that you don't want to put pins through, you could tape edges down just to make sure that it's all held together, as well as on the back side, you could tape your, your applique fabric down, okay? Now, my applique fabric I put at an angle, so that's why you can see it on the outside, and I probably have a little bit more than I need, because um, you can get a smaller piece, but I just want to make sure that I catch the back side of it. Okay, so now let's take it to our machine. So I've threaded my machine up with some Madeira Glamour thread. It's one of my favorites. So you can see that up here. And then I use standard thread for my bobbin. So I have that down in the bottom of my machine. And then I wanna use a triple stitch, okay? You could do a straight stitch twice um, to make it bolder, but I like this triple stitch here. So I'm going to select that. And then I want my needle to be in the center because we're going to stitch through our stabilizer template. So if you can see, this is the one that I printed. I had taped it together and I layered it together with my outer fabric and my applique fabric underneath. And again, if you don't want to do it through the printer, you could just tape stabilizer together or use a big piece of stabilizer and trace that template and then do the same thing, okay? So I'm gonna switch that needle to the center position using my stitch width so I can get it right in the center. And I am also using a Madeira Glamour needle so that it helps my thread run through more smoothly. And then I'm using a open toe clear foot and you can see how helpful that is as you're doing applique. All right, so let's get sewing. So you're just gonna run that needle right along the edge of that template. Okay, so when you use a triple stitch, you wanna make sure that you follow along as to which stitch it's in, okay? So it's gonna go forward, backward, forward. So you wanna make sure that it completes that set of three before you turn your corner. 
All right, and then to pivot, you can lift your foot. But of course, if you have a machine that has a hands-free um, presser foot lifter, that's really helpful. Um, it looks, it's the knee lift that plugs into your machine. Or my machine has the automatic pivot. And what that does is every time you stop sewing, it will lift your foot so you can pivot. So I'm super excited I get to use that with this project. And I slow down at every corner. And if you get off just a little bit, that's okay. You can see I'm running my needle right next to it now. All right, now we're going to stitch around the entire snowflake. So I've locked my stitches in place. I matched my beginning stitch with my end stitch and I'm ready to cut my thread, take it out of the machine. And now we get to tear the stabilizer off. So I'm going to bring it over here and take my pins out. And because this stitch is so sturdy, it's easier to tear your stabilizer out. But it does take a minute and you definitely want to make sure that you kind of hold your stitches down as you're tearing your stabilizer. So the first big reveal is taking that stabilizer off and you get to see that pretty decorative thread that stitched and you can see how cool that snowflake looks. And what's really awesome is if you do get slightly off, once you tear that stabilizer away, you can't really tell. So at this point we have one of two choices. We can leave it as a single stitch or we can add a second stitch. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna take this back over to my machine. So now my needle position was in the center and I need something to line my foot up with. Okay, so I want that stitch to be right on the inside of my current stitch line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just hit that triple stitch again so that it will reset my needle to the left position. And this time I'm gonna change my stitch length to three. You can, it's up to you, you can choose 2.5 or three. Um, I would stay consistent with both stitch lines. Um, but I kind of wanted to show you the, so you could see the difference, okay, on this second stitch line. So what I'm going to do is on my open toe foot, I have a marking right in the center of the foot. So that center mark is going to follow the current snowflake line. And then my needle is over to the left, so it's going to be over about an eighth of an inch. All right, so let's do a little bit of that so you can see what it looks like. And this time as you pivot, you have to go a little bit further than each corner uh, so that you can come in that eighth of an inch as you stitch. And then of course stop short so that you can still make that pivot and have that eighth of an inch. And I'm using this Glamour thread, but you know, you can use just standard sewing machine thread. It's fun to use a thread that's a little bit of a different color, um, but you can also use embroidery thread, any other type of top stitching thread that will stand out. If you're stitching on a suede or leather fabric, you might consider testing out a leather needle. And 
as you stitch the second line, you still might even find some little stabilizer bits in your <laughs> stitch line that you need to take out. Fair warning. And I don't know if you can see, I'm pretty consistent as far as that eighth of an inch goes, but in some parts it's closer, some parts it's a little bit further away. Um, and again, I think that's something that looks really cool. All right, so I've stitched a little portion here of two stitch lines so you can see what it looked like. And now the second big reveal, which is cutting your reverse applique out. So reverse applique meaning we're going to cut this fabric out here. So it's going to be a raw edge applique, which is why we wanted to choose a fabric that wouldn't fray. So I have my applique scissors here, and I also like to start it with a pair of small snips, just because I do have that nice fabric underneath my top um, fabric. So I wanna make sure that I don't clip that, right? That's very important. So I'm just going to come in here, and you can, you can just come in here and pull that and kind of clip into that top layer and then just continue going. Sometimes I like to save this outer layer just in case I wanna do something with it. So in that case, I would just come real close into the edge here. And again, you wanna make sure that I'm just lightly, really lightly snipping to make sure that I don't catch that under layer, okay? So I wanna make sure that I grabbed the stabilizer underneath this white fabric and then I can continue on. Now I've only snipped a tiny little piece and it kind of helps to get started with my snips just because there's not a lot snipped yet and it's hard to get those applique scissors in there. And I'm just being really careful because the fabric I chose for my applique, the blue fabric underneath, is a very loose weave. And so I just wanna be very careful that I don't clip any of the threads there. And then you're just gonna take your time because you wanna make this edge look as nice as possible, okay? Especially even more so if you're using like a cork um, or a pleather, you just wanna take your time so that you make a nice cut. And that looks good and I can take my applique scissors. Now, typically we use the duckbill part of the scissors to get into our applique, but because these areas here are a little bit thin, it's hard to get that duck belt in there. So something I'll do is continually lift this fabric up, especially because again, I have a very loose weave underneath and I definitely don't wanna catch that with my applique scissors. Okay, so I'm just trying to make those edges as even as I can. You can always go back in and tidy your edges up. And again, if you get into a tight little area like this again, you can use those snips just to get to your next corner. Okay, and this just takes some patience because you start to see that applique fabric underneath and it gets exciting because you can start to see how cool it looks underneath. Reveal that fabric that you were wanting to bring out. Okay, so I'm just going in and just kind of trimming that up continually lifting that fabric up and away from that applique fabric. Um, and you wanna stitch close enough to where you still have a little bit of a lip here. But, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to keep this piece for later, but, you can see how cool that's looking. Um, so yeah, you wanna make sure that you don't clip into your thread, um, but that you still clip um, close enough to give that nice lip of fabric. Okay, so it's just a tiny little area of margin right there. I'm gonna have to work on that one a little bit more. All right, so then as you work all the way around, you just keep slowly clipping away at it and you're done. All right, so after you've clipped the inside area of the fabric out to reveal your beautiful reverse applique, 
And then you'll want to trim down this fabric here, okay? So I just trimmed it down pretty close. If your fabric shows through a little bit more than mine, you might cut it down a little bit more. That is going to be a raw edge, but it's on the inside of your pillow and shouldn't get rustled too much. So that should be fine on the inside of that. If you'd like to press some stabilizer, like a fusible knit stabilizer to the entire backside, just to kind of keep that concealed and hidden, you can do that as well. All right, so we are at the point where we can stitch our piping on. So we have a really thick rope type piping and I am going to now position my applique with what I would like to be the top and the bottom. So I want my snowflake to where these two areas here are at the top and the bottom. And I want to specify the bottom because I'd like to put my piping at the bottom edge where my zipper is going to be, okay? So let's go over to the machine and take a look at the different things that I've set up on it. I've placed my standard thread up in the top and then I've gone back to a standard needle and you can use a 12, you can use a 14, either of those will work fine depending on the fabric that you're using. And we'll want to put that adjustable zipper foot or the narrow zipper foot so that you can get in close to that piping. And I'm going to switch to a straight stitch with my needle over to the left. And then once I place my fabric under here, I'm going to position that adjustable zipper foot to where I would like it, okay? I'm going to take my stitch length up just a little bit so that we can more or less just tack this cording down, all right? So I'm going to bring the bottom edge up to my foot and then let's take the cording and I want to place it somewhere along that lower edge. And I'm going to give about a two inch leeway just so when we join this cording, we can overlap those two edges. So my cording has about a half inch seam allowance and I want that needle to run very closely. You'll notice that my needle is in the left position and if I start sewing, it's going to sew through that cording. So, and I actually wanna start about two inches down. Again, so when I combine my front um, or my end with my beginning, it'll give me some excess to um, rope together. So again, so let's make sure to move that needle over. So I'm gonna touch my stitch width button over here just to get that needle moved over. And you can tell it kind of rolls in on itself and we really wanna get pretty close to um, the edge of that piping. So once you get that needle lined up nicely where you'd like it to be, you might consider even using a stiletto just to kind of keep your fingers away um, because with both of the zipper feet I've talked about, um, there isn't a lot of protection around the needle. So you just wanna make sure that you keep your fingers out of the way as you're stitching. And we're going to start stitching and we're going to stop short about two inches from the end of our pillow front. All right, now as we get a little bit closer, we need to snip a couple of these edges so that we can turn the corner with this cording. So about an inch and a half. I'm going to clip that cording about every half inches so we can get a nice turn there right at that corner. Okay, and you can always kind of place it and see how that looks if that's going to give you a nice curve. And that looks good to me. So you just want to make sure that you are consistent with each corner so that they all look pretty much the same. Okay, so I'm just going to hold those. You can, of course, do this and pin it ahead of time, um, but if you feel comfortable just going for it, this is how I do it. Okay, and just push that cording out of the way if it starts to give you any trouble. You can use a stiletto or just reposition. Okay, and as I turn that corner, I'm just going to start pivoting. Thank you. 
am just placing that cording as I go. And you'll notice I clip pretty far into that seam allowance, but you don't want to clip the rope part of it. Okay. And then as you approach that corner, you just turn that cording and make that as curvy or as pointy as you'd like to, or as the cording will allow you. And you can see I'm trying to stitch really close up to the next, to the edge of that. So we stitched around the entire pillow front to get this piping cord on. Then when you get close to the end, you want to cut about a two or three inch overlap. And I like to err on the side of caution. So I'll probably go three or four inches here. And now we need to combine these two edges. And I remember the first time I saw this, I was like, how on earth do you do this? Do you just kind of overlap that? But of course it gets really thick here, right? Because it's thick cord. So we cut off a good amount to make sure that we had excess um, when we overlap these two. But when you look and notice that you left that two inch tail here, you want about the same amount on the other side, okay? So I'm going to overlap these two and where I started sewing before, because I have that two inch space here, that's about as much as I need um, to get these two overlapped, okay? And this is such a cool technique, I love this because it looks so nice once you overlap the cords together. So I'm going to take my little snips here and you'll notice that there is, again, as you were stitching, that there's a seam allowance stitched to this piping cord, right? And um, so you can see the stitching there even. So what you wanna do on both ends is clip away that seam allowance for about two inches so that you can start unraveling that cord so that we can twist them together. That looks about two inches, and then we're gonna do the same for the other side. It's really easy, because it's like a basting stitch on this seam allowance here, this tape that they've stitched to the piping cord. Okay, and that looks pretty good. And then we only need to undo about an inch here. I love this technique. I learned it from Pam Damore. She is awesome. Okay, so we're gonna take a, off about an inch so that we can get these two edges overlapped, okay? And it just takes a little bit of finagling, all right? So I'm gonna kind of line these up like so. And then we're gonna take two of these over and two under, okay? So what we want to do is make it look as seamless as possible. Okay, so it just takes a little bit of playing. So if you can see, I took this cord and I wrapped it over these two cords here. And by unraveling these, it makes it a little bit flatter so that we can get that foot over this thick cord here, okay? You can kind of turn it up to make sure that that's going to look really nicely after you stitch it down. You might be looking at this like, oh my word, that's really thick. So one thing to kind of help that is to spread these cords out as best you can. And the thickest part you'll be able to tell is right here. 
So you can even take that seam allowance and kind of spread that out as well so that it is also not in the way. Then we're gonna start with this zipper foot here, this adjustable zipper foot, the one that we have been using. We're gonna start and we're gonna just stitch where we left off, bring it up to as far as it lets us, and then we're gonna switch back to that standard foot. Okay, so let's just get that placement right. Looks good. Okay, and that's about as far as it's going to let me. So I'm going to cut my thread and we're gonna switch this foot out real quick. So, and I am using the J foot and that is the standard sewing foot that comes with my machine. And mine just happens to have a leveling button on it. And sometimes that just helps with these really thick areas. So I need to Move it enough to get that shank back on or that ankle. Tighten that back up. Get that screw nice and tight. You have this leveling button here if you're able to use it. I find that sometimes I might need to start right on top of that piping cord just to make sure that it's nice and tacked down. So I'm gonna make sure everything's spread out, use that extra lift that I have in my machine, and we are going to take this very slowly, okay? So you can see how thick that is. Um, you might even utilize your hand wheel. Um, so turn that towards you, and so you can see how tight that is, how, how close that top of the needle is to your foot when it's in the furthest down position. Okay, but it's gonna handle it. We're gonna get it stitched right down and come all the way across. All right, and once we get that piping cord stitched down, I'm going to press my scissors button. Okay, and at this point, once I've stitched that thick area down, I can clean some of this up and just get that out of the way. You can tell it's just so thick there. And there we go. Alrighty, so I've grabbed my invisible zipper. You don't necessarily have to use an invisible zipper, but I like how um, essentially invisible the zipper itself is. I will tell you, because this is so thick down here, we're not going to stitch as closely as we would on an invisible zipper like we would with a garment. Um, but we're going to turn it over to the back side. And what I wanna do first is mark a couple of places just so that I have a couple of lines to keep it even um, so it'll help with lining up later. So I'm not picking any areas in particular. I will use the end of the zipper to kind of help line up against the edge of the pillow. And you'll notice that I even have a ruler here on my machine, which is really nice uh, because my pillow is 18 inches. So I can use that to my advantage. Um, so I'm gonna place a mark right here and then kind of compare it to my actual fabric. Now I typically, so you know, we used a really thick cord on the front. So I kind of like to start with something that's a little bit easier um, to stitch the first side of the zipper down. So I'm going to grab the back side of my fabric and we're going to stitch it onto that first. So what I wanna make sure is that I have a little quilted grid or a design on my fabric. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm keeping it the same way as the front side and I want to find what I'm going to use for the bottom of my pillow okay then I'm going to place this even right here and on the front side because we have corners we can start in a little bit further so about an inch and a half over and an inch and a half over on the left side that's what we're going to stitch down, okay? And then when this flips out, we're going to try to make it as invisible as we can, but again, that thick cording makes it kind of hard to get too close, and you wanna make sure that your zipper still um, lines up. So I've held pretty sides or right sides together 
Okay, so I know that this is the side that I want to stitch down to the back side of my pillow. So I can unzip my zipper at that point. And I'm going to keep this aligned with that top edge there. And then I'm going to stitch it on. If you are uncomfortable with stitching without pins, by all means, go ahead and pin that zipper down. And I'm gonna to switch to that narrow zipper foot. You can certainly use that adjustable zipper foot as well. Um, but I really like this foot. It's an optional foot for our machines, but I really like it. It's totally worth, worth getting because it's so narrow. So now my needle is lined up to where it would actually hit the foot with the last stitch that we did. So I'm going to do a left justification to make sure that my needle lines up far to the left and won't hit my zipper foot. And then again, I'm going to stitch inward just a little bit. And of course, we're gonna stitch those corners when we stitch the entire pillow together. And you'll kind of see that as we go along. Now these markings that we made don't matter quite yet. It'll just help with aligning that front side um, once we get the zipper on, okay? So I'm just going to make sure that we are good as far as placement goes. And that looks great. I'm gonna do a little back stitch at the beginning and then continue on. Now we do have an invisible zipper foot, which is great for invisible zippers where you truly want it to be invisible. But again, because we have that thick piping cord, it's pretty well gonna help hide this zipper. So I'm just gonna stitch pretty closely to those zipper teeth. I'm gonna continually line up my zipper. Making sure not to stitch on the zipper teeth. And you can see how quickly this goes on. And let's get all the way to the end. And again, if you stop a little bit short, that's okay because this is just going to be stitched into the corner of the pillow. So I'm gonna do a little back stitch there. Okay, and then at this point, you can do a couple of things. You can zip the zipper back up. Okay, and then compare it to that second side. So if you are somebody who wants to pin, you can pin it to make sure that it's going to line up exactly where you want it to. But this will also be a great marker for after you've stitched this side up to the front side to make sure that you have things lined up, okay? So something you might do before you unzip it again, make sure that the left and right sides of the front of the pillow are matching up the same as the back side. So you can see those edges there. And then this is where I might place a pin. Okay, and you can certainly make some marks on your fabric so you can know where these are going to line up. So you can see I made just a little mark on the front side of my pillow um, so that I can know when I'm lining that zipper up without pins. And this side is really thick, so I'm gonna just mark on the other side so I can kind of gauge where I want to line that up. And of course, over here, I wanna make sure that the top of the zipper is going to line up with that. Now, pinning does help because sometimes orientation can be a little tricky with these invisible zippers since they don't go on like your standard zipper. So I'm going to unzip that. And then, again, we're gonna just stitch really closely to the edge of that zipper. So I'm gonna leave my pin there just momentarily, place my foot down, take my needle into the zipper tape, and then I can take that uh, pin out so it doesn't get in my way as I stitch. So let's just get up to the thickness and we'll take it from there. Again, just continually, you can see a lot of times that zipper, especially with the piping, tends to want to move. 
Um, it pushes the zipper over and then it pushes your foot over a little bit. So just take your time and continually line that up. Okay, and we don't want to stitch too terribly close to those zipper teeth. Otherwise it will struggle to zip up because there's so much thickness in that lower seam. Okay, and I'm getting to it where it's really thick, so I'm going to go as far as it will let me go. And let's see if we can just get over that with this zipper foot. I am giving a little bit of pressure right behind here to try to help it through as well as pushing it. Normally we don't recommend that um, because usually you want to let the machine pull it through. So I would say don't pull too hard, just kind of help it. Gently help it through the machine. Take your time over that thickness if you're using a thick cord like me. If you're a beginner, I would suggest just starting with a thinner cord or a smaller cord just to kind of get used to it and work your way up to cord like this. All right, and look how well it handled that thickness. And then we want to make sure that we're still lining up nicely, so check those marks that you made. If there's a little bit of discrepancy at the end, like it looks like mine be, might be just past this fabric just a little bit, I think we'll still be okay. So we'll take a look at it after we zip it up. I feel like zippers always look so intimidating, but I don't know about you, it's pretty easy, huh? All right. So we've talked about all of our big reveals. I know putting a zipper on can always be a big reveal. So it's our third big reveal of our project today. And we can flip these out. We'll more easily line up. Okay, so you can see that you can see that zipper a little bit. So if you want to try to get in closer, you absolutely can. Um, I would recommend on the back side so that you can get even a little bit closer on the back side. Um, but again, it's something that hides under that, that piping cord there. So it's up to you how particular you want to be. But I think that looks pretty good. We got pretty close on the sides here. So we can stitch this entire thing. We're almost done. So let's unzip to, I don't know, a little more than halfway so that we can easily turn this right side out. And then we're going to place pretty sides together, okay? And this is one place that I like to pin at least in a couple of places. Um, so we're gonna make sure that that zipper is nice and lined up. And I'm gonna place a couple of pins on the corners and then maybe maybe in between a little bit, because we want to make sure where the piping cord kind of stitched, it shrunk the fabric in a little bit. So let's make sure that we can get those lined up nicely. And typically I like to pin perpendicular to where my stitch line is, um, but because this is so thick, I'm gonna put those pins parallel. But just make sure that you don't stick yourself when you are sewing. I'll kind of show you that as we get going. All right, so I'm just moving around and I'm trying to fit that fabric in between. We don't want an all out stretch, but you will want to fit that back fabric to that front fabric. So, and there is a little bit of give because again, some of the times that piping cord will pull um, the fabric in as you stitch it. So I'm just gonna find that center. Make sure those two edges are even. And you might notice that we have excess zipper on the end, but we're going to stitch right over that and then we'll cut that excess off. All right, so let's just take a look at it. That looks pretty good. So we have stitched this area closed essentially because when we close the zipper, that edge will be closed. But what we need to do is start at one end of the zipper and we're gonna try to start on that curve as close as we can on an end on the other side 
about at the same point. So if you stitch over that zipper, that's okay because it's gonna close the end of that zipper, okay? And it'll be fine once, once you turn the project right side out. Um, so I'm gonna come right in here. I'm gonna, again, just use that narrow zipper foot and just try to get in as closely as I can to that piping cord. And this time we have our stitch length at 2.5. Remember when we stitched the piping cord down, we went with a longer stitch length so that we could kind of tack it down. But now we want to stitch that front and back side together with that 2.5 millimeter standard stitch length. Okay, so when I first start, I'm going to give that a nice back stitch a couple times because I want that to be very sturdy right there because we're going to turn it right side out and we're going to place a pillow form in there so it could get a little bit of tension um, or pressure on that seam there, especially at the edge of the zipper where it separates at the top of the zipper. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna take my time. I love this narrow zipper foot because I can get really close in. And I always tell students, after you do a corner, if you're unhappy with it, if it's kind of, um, if it's not an absolute curve, if you get little bumps in the curve, you can always go back in and stitch it again. Nobody will know the wiser. So you can kind of correct those um, bumps or uneven stitching going over it again. Okay, I'm gonna pull out my little stiletto tool here and this will help because you can see that fabric's going to keep pulling away because we have that thickness here. So just try to get it in as, as close as you can, but once you get that pillow form in there, it's all gonna look really nice. And again, you can pin more than I did to keep those layers nice and together as you stitch. Okay, and this is where I wanted to warn anyone who has pinned their pins perpendicular like I have. You can notice that the fabric is feeding into the machine this way and you're bringing your hands this way. So it's really easy to accidentally snag your finger. So that's what one thing that I like to caution people as you stitch to make sure to pull those pins out. And I like to point them this way because if you point them the other way, sometimes you can get the head of the pin too close to the foot and it's a little more tricky to get out. So just a little tip there. It's kind of my preference. But again, you have to make sure you don't get your finger as it feeds towards the machine. And something else too, as you're stitching, if you are noticing that you're not stitching as closely to that piping, sometimes I'll take a second pass. So I'll stitch around it once and then stitch again so that I can make sure that I get as close to that piping as possible. Because this first time around, I'm kind of focusing on making sure that I keep those edges even. And you can see continually that fabric is just pulling in. It's not staying as even. But as long as we snag some seam allowance, we're good. But it is nice to take that, that second pass to focus more on making sure that we're right against that edge. All right, and again, once we get to those corners, we're just gonna take our time, try to get that needle as close to the cording without stitching through it, which sometimes is hard to know until you actually turn it, um, but you get the feel of it over time. Just take some practice. All right, and just continually readjust as you need to going around. Remember, sometimes that back fabric can have a little bit excess, so just make sure to ease it in, meaning that you're just slightly going to give a little bit of pull just on the fabric, not against the machine, just to make sure that that back fabric is fitting to that front fabric. All right, here we are in our last corner. Again, we're just going to take it slow, continually press that fabric in. I love to use a stiletto tool on um, corners like this just because I don't want to get my fingers that close to the needle, um, so it's just extra protection. As I turn the corner, you can kind of see that I got off a little bit, so you can always lift your needle up and just bring that foot right back in. Maybe do just a little back stitch just to make sure you covered that area and continue on.
And this way too, when you use a tool like a stiletto, you can just push that fabric down on that seam allowance to help get a nice tight fit as you stitch it down. All right, so we're coming up on the end of our zipper. And this is the close end, okay? So this is really important. This is where you want to make sure that your zipper is closed, okay? Because we don't want that zipper pull to be down here on the edge of the zipper tape uh, because you'll stitch right over it and you won't be able to move that zipper pull unless you take your stitches out, right? So we wanna make sure that that zipper is at least closed halfway, um, again, so we can open it. You don't want it to be closed all the way because then it's a little bit harder to turn it inside out. You have to try to get that zipper pull unzipped. Now, my zipper is gonna fold on itself a little bit here. Um, that's okay. I'm gonna stitch right across it, okay, to try to end it so that we can actually um, cut our zipper short because it's a little bit long. Um, which is helpful when you're stitching it on, but we don't need that excess zipper inside the pillow. So let's continue to take our time stitching around that corner like you've done prior on the other three. We're gonna try to stay close to that curve. And once we get to a straight edge, we're just going to stitch over that. And remember it's plastic, so you can stitch over those plastic um, zipper teeth. It's not going to damage your needle. Just take your time. So I'm kind of going at an angle um, just to make sure that we've stitched over that zipper end. I'm gonna cut my thread. And at this point, we know that that has closed the end of our zipper, so we can cut off the excess here. I don't typically like to use my nice sewing scissors to cut off zippers. It works just fine, um, but I'm gonna snag an additional pair. It's funny how we as seamstresses like to use different scissors for different purposes. So you can use those, or you can use pinking shears so that you can get a nice edge here. Um, another way to kind of close that zipper is you can zigzag along the bottom edge but since we've stitched this closed right here, that will work just fine. Our zipper pull won't run past it and run right off. Um, so we're good there. I am going to make sure, I always love, especially using really thick piping cord, that I take a second pass. You can kind of see right here that I got a little bit far. So what's nice about after you've stitched it down the first time, the second time you can really pay attention to getting that needle in very close to the piping. All right, so we are almost done. I can barely contain my excitement. Let's pull this off of the machine. I love this part because you get to see that final reveal, right? So I'm going to clip off these extra, or this excess fabric at the corners so we don't have that inside there when we stuff it with our pillow form. Okay, and now we get to turn it inside out. So if you'd like to at this point, you can unzip that zipper even a little bit further so that it's a little bit easier to bring through. And we're gonna pull it out. Oh my gosh, I love this part. <laughs> so exciting. Just to see what it's gonna look like. And again, if you turn it out at this point and you notice some imperfections that you need to go back and and correct, totally fine. It's kind of just a part of sewing, is making corrections or accepting ones that are a little bit off. All right, let me bring that last corner out. Oh my goodness, it looks so nice. So real quick, before we stuff it, ah, I love it. Let's close that zipper up to make sure we're good there. Okay, it zipped, so that's exciting. And last but not least, I need to grab that pillow form. Where did I put that? Oh yeah, here we go. Just fluff it how you want it. I just need to get that zipper zipped up. And again, you can see that zipper on the back side, but it's on the back side, it's underneath that really thick cord, so no one's going to see it, only you will know it's there. But look at that, it looks so great. I hope that you enjoyed this project. Make sure to check out more of them over at babylock.com. We'll see you there.